Welcome one on one here at uh, the New Jersey Performing Arts Center. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce um, Michael Kumsty, who is a Tony nominated actor. Right now, he is uh, performing The Lion in Winter at uh, the Two River Theater in beautiful Red Bank, New Jersey. Uh, after so many Broadway productions in which you've been a star in, and you're just an icon in the business. Um, I got to ask you something Broadway to Red Bank to this particular theater, which has got a great reputation. Yeah. What's it like? It's a fantastic theater. I've been fortunate. I've done a lot of Broadway. I've done like 17 Broadway shows. Many of the shows are not as good as what we do at Two River. It, absolutely, honestly. How do you explain that? Well, it's a, the theater was founded by Bob and Joan Recknitz, who yes. love it and have put a lot of themselves into it. Um, it's well funded, it's well supported. They, uh, we get a lot of grants from a lot of different organizations and it's just, they do really fine work. Um, and they don't have the economic pressure that is on the theaters in New York, you know, they don't have to charge $120, $200 right. a ticket. Um, and they've got a diverse audience and uh, like I was just, the last thing I did there, which is a show that just closed, was an August Wilson play called My Rainey's Black Bottom, which was right up there in the top three most satisfying experiences I've ever had in the theater. And there's a lot of August Wilson connections. Yeah. Explain that. Well, uh, the guy who runs it, John Diaz, has a, real, uh, a long-standing collaborative relationship with Ruben Santiago Hudson, who was one of August Wilson's original sort of company. He was on actors. our show. Ruben, right. Amazing guy. Yes. Writer, actor, director. Talented. Extraordinary guy. So uh, he's been directing, he, not only him, but Brandon Durden, who I know is also yeah, on boss, the show. He's coming in a little bit later today, who he played is. Dr. King in All the Way yeah. with Brian Cranston. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just name dropping. I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, absolutely. Well, he was in this Ma Rainey's Black Bottom that, that I was just telling you about. What a, talent. Astonishing performer. And Ruben directed it. It's, you know, it's absolutely world Getting class. the best. The best. In Jersey. Yeah. Who? Yeah. How, and so, so is there a tremendous buzz? Listen, we're not just looking to promote here, we're really not. But is it that there is a great reputation around this theater, the work it does, and that great performers want to be a part of this? Yeah, absolutely. And not just the performers, you know, with, with the writers and the directors and the designers. The, this show that um, I'm in rehearsal for now, uh, we have a lighting designer called Jennifer Tipton, who is truly regarded as one of the greatest lighting designers in the world. Um, the, the technical stuff down there is extraordinary, as, as beautiful as anything I've been in mm. on Broadway. I mean, not the 20, 30, 40 million dollar musicals, but you know. It's, it's, Lion in Winter. Oh yeah. Tell folks. So Lion in Winter is this great play, right? Uh, they turned it into a movie, um, Catherine Hepburn won, won the Oscar. Um, it's a historical drama, but it's, it's very much a contemporary American play. Um, but it, pretends to be about uh, King Henry II in 1183 and his wife Eleanor of Aquitaine and they were and their kids and they were a remarkable family. Um, she had been the Queen of France, he was 11 years younger than her when he was 19 years old, he married her and uh, a marriage of passion and then she led several civil wars against him and his <laughs> kids fought against him in and the your civil role? wars. I'm playing Henry II. And, and it's a funny play and, uh, and, and a sort of um, insightful play. It's about choosing leadership. It's about like, you know, you, this, this king, I'm the lion and I'm getting on, so I'm in winter and I've got these kids, none of whom I trust, and I have to decide who's going to run the country. <laughs> and so it's about choosing who's going to run the country. So it's pretty apt. Hold on a second. We are 13, uh, uh, I date ourselves, but I always disclose. We are 13 days out from choosing who will be the leader of our country. This yeah. show will air after. Totally apt. Yeah. I mean... The, there were some pretty extraordinary things happening around the time of this story, but one of them, one of the princes in this play is Prince John, who became King John. He was sort of a disastrous king. He was Robin Hood's nemesis. Um, but he was also the guy who was such a bad king that they wrote the Magna Carta, which was the founding document that led, many people say, the, the seeds of the American That's Constitution right. are in the Magna Carta. So, you know. You're fascinated by history, are you not? Yeah. Because? Um, 
Well, you know, it's interesting. I've moved around a lot. I, I, I started out in England, and then my father moved us to South Africa for several years, and then I moved back to England for two years, then I came to the States. And so I don't have deep roots in any particular place. Um, and so I think I have a more of a kind of outsider perspective sometimes. And that makes me really interested in the, in the, in this, in the history of things. Because I, I guess I don't, I don't feel like I have my own deep-rooted history, so I'm fascinated by yours. I also know that you are fascinated by directing. I do like directing. Talk about that. I spend most of my career acting. Um, I would do directing of things like projects at uh, NYU grad school. I did one of those, but not fully mounted productions. And then uh, in three consecutive seasons at Classic Stage Company, I did Hamlet and Richard II and Richard III, and was collaborating with the director so much that he, in the last production, gave me a credit as uh, um, co-director. And I found it enormously satisfying. So. I asked uh, John Diaz, who runs there, if I could, uh, who runs Two River, if I could do a show, and he'd let me do, um, he did let me do a fully minor production of a play called Third by Wendy Wasserstein. And I f found it thrilling for this reason, because, you know, when I'm acting, it's always the perspective of the character. You really have to get inside the character, and that really does preclude a, a kind of universal, deep comprehension of the play, because you're so narrowly focused. And directing is quite the opposite. You've got, to, you've got to assimilate everything about the play. And you, you get to call the shots, you know. I really liked it. I, again, I, I do ask this question, as people know. I'm sorry if you're tired of it, but it has value. <laughs> I ask a leadership question, but given your work as a director and having been on the other end as an actor, the thing you've learned most about leadership in your work as a director is? Um, I think it's very tempting for directors to think that because the acting process is assimilative and you can't just learn the lines and do it, you've got to kind of let it germinate um, at a sort of subconscious level. This may sound like hokey, but it's absolutely true. It's very tempting for directors to infantilize actors and think that they're not smart. This is a child. Because they don't produce it like that. I mean, they're, they're, they're not children. So it, for me to get on the other side and to realize, you know, when people don't produce what you would like them to produce right now, it's because it's a process and you've got to give them time and space. I'm sorry, I need to think that through again. <laughs> uh, it's not just relevant for directors, but all of us who think we're supposed to have the answers and direct and manage and lead other people, yeah. they have to go through a process. Yeah, absolutely. And just because we think we see something. Yeah. It's so interesting. And by the way, um, one of the, the really great, um, when, uh, Boardwalk Empire, you were, in fact? I was the skeevy piece. <laughs> no, you were not. They stop. It's the wrong role. You were Father? Brennan. Father Brennan. Is that right? Yeah, you're Father Brennan. I saw people trying to get confession from you. <laughs> trying to have you do their confession. I won't do that as a Catholic. I know who I'm supposed to go to. Listen, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate Steve. it. All the best. Yeah. Stay with us. We'll be right back from New Jersey Performing Arts Center in beautiful Newark, New Jersey. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation and the New Jersey Performing Arts Center in association with NJTV and WNET. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJPAC has been provided by Prudential Financial's Global Communications Department, NJIT, the Community Food Bank of New Jersey, PSE&G, TD Bank, RWJ Barnabas Health, and by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.